going guys? Casey here with the Coyote Works channel. Well, I'm headed out on another adventure. We finally got a decent amount of snow in my hometown. I'm headed out again in the truck with my ground tent camping set up and we're gonna see how this does with a decent amount of snow on the ground. I'm really excited about this trip. I um, really enjoy kind of blending the more traditional old school camping techniques in with a little bit of modern gear and equipment where it makes sense. So I wanted to show you guys some of the ways that I meld those two things together. And with this set up in the truck with running a ground tent and a minimal amount of gear in the back, it, it gives me the perfect opportunity to show you guys some of that stuff. We're gonna head down south of the border for the theme for our evening meal tonight. We've got some cool stuff in store for us on this trip. I think you guys are really gonna enjoy coming along for this one. It's just a beautiful drive out here with all this fresh fallen snow on the ground. So I wanted to hit you guys up and show you a little bit of this just because it's so breathtaking out there. But as you guys know, my adventure begins where the pavement ends. So I want to show you a little bit of the scenery along the way, but I'll hit you back when we finally get off the pavement. So most of you know that this truck was my grandpa's old truck and he died a while ago. and but was a pretty profound influence in my life. So I just recently had the guys up at Lolo Overland in Portland, Oregon, do some fixing up to this old truck and it's been pretty cool getting it back out on some adventuring. All right, we are off the pavement so I'm a happy boy here. Interestingly enough, I'm at a higher elevation than where I live, actually significantly higher. I think I'm up close to 5,000 feet but there's less snow out here. And this isn't super uncommon because um, this is the high desert country and the further out east and south we get into this country, the drier it gets and the less precipitation there is. So it's colder out here, but there's a little less snow on the ground. So I'm a little bit disappointed about that. I was hoping to really get into some deep snow, but maybe when we gain a little bit more elevation, we'll um, get into a little more snow. All right, we're just gonna stop here and check the map. And I'm trying to decide what direction I wanna head to camp. The, um, I definitely wanna get into an area with a good amount of firewood. This time of year, I'm gonna wanna be burning a good size fire for a long time. It's getting dark by about 5.30 or so. It'd also be really cool to find some old history out here. And there are some areas in here that I'm gonna go through that there are stuff to be found in, but with the snow on the ground, that always makes that a little challenging too. It's interesting, it must not have been really cold out here because right underneath the snow, there's actually some mud. So I'm gonna need to be a little bit careful of that. There's a few places where there's actually some decently deep water and some pretty soft soil underneath the snow. So. We'll have to kind of pay attention to the temperature and if it starts warming up much, that could get a little bit problematic for us. All right, we are gonna take a quick little walk. Right back there, there's a little canyon and there was some moonshine activity in this area. So we're gonna take a quick little walk back there and see if we see any signs because we've got a decent amount of daylight. So let's go check it out. There's an old line fence back here behind me, but other than that, nothing. Yeah, it's crazy how cold it is out here. The, the sun's shining and it looks like it should be warm, but, and there's frost crystals in the air. I don't know if the camera's picking those up, but anyway, nothing guys, not a single tin can or anything. There's an old well not too far from here. So I thought maybe in this little kind of cut in here, this little draw, might have been a good place for a camp or a homestead or a whiskey still or something being relatively close to a water source but i'm not seeing anything so i think we're going to beat feet back to the truck and uh, find us a spot to camp there's 
quite a few sets of rabbit tracks going back and forth across in here. So I bet right at the base of one of these trees, there's a little rabbit den or a little rabbit hide. So it'd be a good place to set up a snare or even just do some circling in here to do some hunting and get some rabbit stew for dinner. see if we can find us a campsite. All right, so we're starting to get back into an area with some trees, so that's a good sign. So we'll have some uh, good options for firewood, I think, back in here. What I'm really looking for is a spot with, in fairly close proximity, some standing dead timber or even some down dead juniper that I can use for firewood. It'd also be nice if there were some exposed rocks right in the immediate vicinity so I can build a good fire reflector wall. So at this point, it's uh, really not that late in the afternoon, but I'm looking forward to just spending a little bit of time crafting up a camp. So as soon as we see something, oh, oh. Okay, well, let's uh, let's roll up the window here. Probably you're gonna need to put it in four-wheel drive. Oh yeah, there we go, we're not stuck at all. Huh, that's pretty soft in there. Yeah, I was really hoping not to get completely filthy, but all right, I guess we'll have to go through. There we go. Now we're back on some more solid stuff. So, so anyway, just um, at this point, just really keeping my eyes open for a nice little campsite. And this area looks really promising here. So hopefully it won't be too much longer and we'll find a cool little spot. All right, guys, it's not perfect, but this will work. The nice thing about this is it's an old homestead site. And I'll walk you guys around because there's some pretty cool ruins here, but... First things first, let's get our camp set up. All right, so we got a nice level spot right here that I'll put the tent on. I'm actually gonna trim back a few of these limbs a little bit. You can see the trucks backed up over there and then right over there, I've got the remnants of an old fire pit that I'll be able to tune back up and use tonight. I don't know if you guys can see this very well, but here's an old fire pit here that I'll, I'll kind of rearrange these rocks a little bit and make it a little bit more how I like to set up my fire pit, which you guys have seen a lot of times before, but I like to make a nice tall reflective wall, a nice wide fire pit, and tonight I'm gonna to be cooking over the fire, so I need to make it big enough so I can have a cooking area off to the side. And then, I don't know how well you guys can see this, but I got a nice view out there behind me, and the sun will come up over there, so where I set my tent up, the sun will hit my tent when it first comes up this in the morning. It'll light this spot up and give me that warmth of the early morning sun. So one of the things I really enjoy and one of the things that I think about as part of kind of keeping it old school with camping is coming into a site, taking a look at what you have to work with and imagining what you can use to help make your camp more comfortable or what you can use to make it easier to set up all the things that you need in camp. So this site here, I've got a spot for my tent that I'm gonna trim back the limbs, but at the same time, those limbs I'll be able to use for firewood. I've got an old fire pit over here that hasn't been used for years and years and years, but it's basically already a pile of rocks. So I'll be able to repurpose those and build a nice fire pit without walking a long ways to carry more rocks. There's also quite a bit of wood in relatively close proximity to camp. So this is a good, this is a good site. It's got everything I need to work with. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, like I said, is just trim up a few of these limbs because I wanna set my tent right about in here. So I just don't want any limbs like rubbing back and forth on it in the night if the wind comes up. I'm running the Makita. This is the 18 volt dual battery. <laughs> battery powered chainsaw. Man, I love this thing. You guys have uh, 
you guys have seen it before in my videos if you've watched any of my previous videos but man this has just made life a whole lot easier I'm wearing this nice warm uh, fleece hoodie that I got from uh, my brother Chad over at CK Knife and Tool. And as you guys know, Chad makes the Coyote Work Survival Knife. So you're going to see that in action a little bit more on this trip too. All right. So there it is. There's all of my camp. It's actually not that much gear. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my tent first. So the things that I have to do is set up my tent, gather some firewood, rebuild the fire pit, um, and basically set up my stuff inside the tent, which actually won't take too terribly long. So I got a nice dry spot right here underneath the tree. I'm just going to stage a little bit of my gear in. So like I said, I'm going to set the tent up first, but I'm going to use for a ground cloth. I've got this 8x10 canvas tarp. And what this should do is give me a good footprint for the tent, and then also give me a couple of feet of canvas that sticks out past the tent that I can use to kind of stage gear or wipe my feet off and stuff going in and out of the tent. So the tent sets up really easy. I just start opening it up. And once I have it kind of opened up like that, then it's just a matter of starting to pop the walls. What I do is I step on the base and I reach in, grab the handle, and I can pop the wall out. So at this point, the tent's set up. But since it is winter and we could get some pretty good wind tonight, that has a habit of happening in this country. I am going to go ahead and stake it down. And I just cut a little baton that will also double as a piece of firewood. So I set up the cot first since it's the uh, biggest piece of equipment. Next, we'll throw out our bedroll, and inside this bedroll is also my sleeping bag. My pillow's in there. All right, so no rest for the wicked. We gotta see if we can get this uh, fire pit whipped up into some semblance of something usable here. As long as the wind doesn't come up too much, I think that'll work. So, next project is gather a little firewood. After I gathered a decent little supply of firewood, I was distracted by the setting sun and enticed into taking a little evening walk. Plus, there was a couple little pieces of history I wanted to check out that were relatively close to camp. This is an old root cellar right here, and 
it's been slowly but surely collapsing in more and more over the years but there's still all of the walls are intact where i'm sitting right here this was how you walked into it and there were stairs going right down here i'll give you guys a little bit more of a look at it and then tomorrow we'll show you guys some of the other remains of this old homestead site that was right here I really needed to get my fire going, but man, it is just so cool in here. And I love this time of day when the sun's going down. So I had to just go for a nice little evening walk here. But the sun's about, ah, I probably got, the sun's going to go down in about 20 minutes. And then I'll have about a half hour worth of light left after that. So I better go get a fire started and uh, start getting ready for dinner. It's interesting there's a lot of really old stumps in here and these were big trees but they were cut down with an axe so these were the trees that they cut down and I'm guessing because these are bigger older more gnarly trees they wouldn't have made good straight fence posts so these were probably cut down for firewood on this dead sagebrush like this makes really good fire starter. These branches are so thin that even when it's been snowing like this, when there's been precipitation out, the air out here is still so dry that it just dries these right off. So I'm going to gather a little handful and this will really help me uh, get my fire started. All right, I got a nice little fire lay here. What I do when the ground's wet and snowy like this is I make a little platform out of wood, a little dry spot. And then the first thing I'm gonna try is I'm gonna try to just light this right with my lighter. It's pretty dry, so I think it may actually light fairly easily. If that doesn't work, I'll grab a little sagebrush bark tinder. I've got my flat, dry part right here that I created by making a little platform out of wood. And then I have this here that'll just allow me to lay sticks and it'll keep them up off the ground, keep some airflow going through there. So let's see how this goes. Think it's gonna work. while my fire's burning down I'll set up a couple of more things set up my camp table for the truck I got this Covea camp table with a wooden top and uh, man so far I really like this thing it's a uh, adjustable height so it can be this low or I can extend these legs out and make it taller also have a Covea camp chair, also from Lola Overland. Hopefully uh, this one's going to be nice and comfortable. It sure felt like it in the showroom. Oh yeah, I like that. I'm also going to set up a ready light here. I uh, don't necessarily really need it. The reason I'm setting it up tonight is mainly because it'll give me some good light to film by. But one thing that I've really been enjoying about camping out of the truck is having the tailgate here is actually really nice. It's like having another table or another workbench. It just gives me one more spot, especially when it's snowy like this. It's nice to have another dry surface to work with. Boom. All right, looks like it's working good. All right, well, remember how I told you guys we were going to do a little uh, southern influence. So I've got some uh, Goya black beans or frijoles negros. These are just salted. This Goya brand is actually, mmm, the flavor is just nice in them. Got some fresh cilantro right here. Got some sour cream. And then I've got the main course, which is going to be this pork chili verde. So what I did is I just cooked a, um, a, a pork tenderloin at home and basically all I did was I just kind of used salt, pepper, garlic salt, 
and slow cooked it for, oh, I don't know, like two hours or something last night. Then I chopped it up, put it inside here, and then I coated it with some chili verde sauce. So the tomatillo chili verde sauce should kind of break down and further tenderize the pork. So we're gonna heat that up, we'll cook the beans, and uh, we'll have ourselves a nice hearty dinner. All right, so there's my chili verde, there's my black beans. I'm just gonna add a little bit of sea salt and a little bit of garlic salt to the beans to give them just a little bit extra flavor. And I've got them in some pie tins, so I'm just gonna heat them up on a grill on a campfire in these pie tins, and that way I'm not gonna dirty my cast iron skillet. All right, so that should give these just a nice extra little bit of seasoning, these beans. All right, look at that. We got a nice bed of coals underneath there. So let's set our dinner on there and get it to cooking. All right, so what I got going on here now is I have a fire that over on one end, and this is why I built a big fire pit down there on that end, I can have my warming fire. And then also I can keep burning, burning stuff and building up more coals. Beverage of choice for the evening is a cherry hint. Enjoying that. So I think this is an example of kind of using a more traditional approach to camping as opposed to setting up a camp stove and everything, just tossing a grill over the fire and cooking over the open coals. All right, oh yeah, I think this is beautiful. God guys, this is gonna be good. Oh, my cilantro's frozen. It's be cold out here. Couple of sprigs of cilantro on there. And a little daisy sour cream. Look at that. All right, let's see how she is. Mmm. Wow, guys, that's perfect. Just a little bit spicy. That cilantro gives it a nice freshness. Very good. So that's a campfire pork chili verde with sour cream, cilantro, and black beans. Freaking incredible. Oh man, guys, that was a delicious dinner. So I've got a little uh, pot of water sitting on the grill there heating up. Might have me a, a little um, cup of hot tea here. And then I've also got a new cast iron skillet. It's actually a two-piece, so it can work as a Dutch oven too. I've got the frying pan portion of it seasoning down there since I've got a grill and some coals. And I was just thinking again about some of the things I really enjoy about the more traditional camping. And, you know, it's hard since... Uh, I'm doing YouTube videos and everything out here. I have so much technology along with me, but I really do enjoy the more traditional old school, the way that I used to camp when I was a kid, just keeping things real simple. All right, well, as you all know, this is one of my favorite little points in the day when uh, I just had a great meal, my belly's full, got a nice refreshing beverage here. I'm just kicking back with a little luck the coyotes will come out and start serenading us pretty soon but i wanted to take a couple of minutes right now and just thank everyone that's made contributions to my channel to the gas and tires fund through the paypal donate link that's down in the description of this video below i really appreciate those direct contributions as you guys know the uh, ad revenue from youtube is sporadic and all across the board it's really difficult to depend on so those direct contributions have really been helping me kind of keep things rolling along and 
your contributions go right into that gas and tire fund but they also help me pay for things like cameras and camera batteries and stuff like that so i really appreciate that direct support as you guys know that goes a long ways towards keeping my channel independent keeping me moving forward yeah at this point i'm just going to relax here a little bit finish my beverage and uh, let the fire die down and then I'll probably migrate into the tent and kick back and show you a little bit more of the detail on that setup. But I have to say, I really enjoy camping this way. Now, don't get me wrong, I love the rooftop tent and there's a lot of benefits to it. When I'm covering a lot more ground, when I'm not spending as much time in camp, the rooftop tent is definitely the way to go. As far as like setting camp up in the dark or tearing down in the dark, really fast set up and tear down the setup that i have going in my jeep is like perfect for that i know you know there's a lot of people that go to the completely self-contained vehicles like the adventure vans and things like that and, and i think those things are really cool but the truth is i actually this is a big part of what i enjoy about the outdoors is a certain amount of this setup a certain amount of this camp craft out here so I don't know that I'd ever go completely away from it. I don't know, maybe when I'm old and it's getting harder and harder for me to move around, I might go that direction. And with that said, I think uh, as soon as this fire burns down, I'm gonna snug up inside the tent. And uh, yeah, I'm actually looking forward to my, that'll be my second night in the Gazelle T4 tent. I bet it'll get down maybe 15 degrees or so tonight. So this will be the coldest night yet in that tent. So we'll see how she goes. All right, well, she's uh, pretty comfortable in here. I've got my uh, buddy heater just running on low, and I'm actually using this uh, Mr. Heater Big Buddy Heater tonight. I wanted to get a feel for how this Big Buddy Heater goes relative to the um, the Buddy Heater. So I would say this is, is an example of a place where a little bit more modern gear actually comes in really handy. I'm really liking the concept of the ground tent. I like the room in here, lots of room to stand up and everything in here. But where the modern gear comes in is having that heater in here really makes a difference. It is really nice being inside a tent this size. So this is the Gazelle T4. My romantic companion for the evening is the uh, Faxon FX19 Hellfire. I've got this uh, fixed up, done my, uh, my rolling special build with it. So I've got the cyanide comp on it, Surefire X300U light. I've got the uh, Trigicon RMR on it. And uh, man, I'm really, really liking this blaster. So Wow, guys, I've just been laying here reading and I'm about ready to drift off. I've been reading uh, Savage Sun by Jack Carr. Good uh, good book. been reading it on my iPad, but if you guys haven't read any of the Jack Carr books yet, I highly suggest you checking it out. But anyway, I'm going to have a little nap here, I think. So that's all for this day, guys. Coyote Works out. I'll see you in the morning for coffee. Oh, good morning, guys. Well, as always, I slept like a baby. Man, it did get cold last night, though. I'm thinking it was probably in the ballpark of uh, 15 degrees last night, something like that. Um, anyway, I'm just having my first coffee. This morning, I'm having the uh, high brew cold brew. This is the double espresso. Ah. <sighs> Mmm, very nice. Very nice. Nice and bold. Get a little coffee, some calories in me this morning. And uh, we'll go out there. I got a pretty delicious breakfast. I'm looking forward to a um, <clears throat> real traditional kind of a cowboy breakfast this morning. So I'll show you guys that in just a bit here. coffee pot is frozen almost solid all right we got to get a fire going guys and it looks like I might need to gather up some small wood to do that another area where I'm totally happy to bust out the new technology is when it comes to the battery-powered chainsaw 
Man, this thing has just revolutionized wood gathering. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, sun's coming out. Kind of burning off that chill a little bit, boy. It's still it's still cold out here this morning. There's frost on everything, but um, <clears throat> fire's nice. Got my cast iron kind of heating up down there. Gonna have another coffee here and just sit and chill a little bit while I'm uh, building up a bed of coals and uh, enjoy the morning. A little bit of wind kicking up and I can see some clouds building up off in the distance there not looking too serious except for over that way which is the direction the winds coming from so I could be in for a little weather I might want to uh, keep an eye on that get my breakfast done and then start buttoning up some stuff like my tent and everything just in case we're gonna get some weather it's always nice to put that stuff away while it's dry walk real quick. I want to show you guys some of this stuff that's really close to camp that relates to this old homestead site that I'm literally camped right basically right in the midst of where this homestead was. So I showed you that root cellar last night so let me show you a couple other things this morning here. Yeah, so this is the old cistern. There's a windmill and a well down there, but my guess is that well probably went dry from time to time. So they needed an extra place to store some water. So they built this cistern up here. That's pretty amazing, the masonry on this. This was quite the homestead back in its day. And they did a lot of improvements around here. They trimmed a lot of the trees, there's a lot of old stumps and everything, so you can tell they gathered firewood for a long time. And I don't know if you can really tell it by looking at it, but right here, is a foundation and what was a little bit of a root cellar that was underneath the actual homestead. This is where the homestead sat right here, protected from the hill back there. Nice view. This is probably where they grazed or did a little farming out here in this open area here. They had a little bit of a root cellar underneath their house. However, the foundation was quite a bit bigger than this root cellar. And then they also had their more significant root cellar up there on the side of the hill that I showed you guys earlier. Here's an old kerosene can with some really interesting cuts in it. I'm pretty sure this was, uh, this was made like this to be a little bit of a hobo stove. It probably wasn't made like this from the homesteaders. It was probably made like this from an old cowboy that was out here sometime after the homestead had disappeared. See that cut out the end and then these ventilation holes here. The other side's open. My guess is that they cooked on top. Right here is where they had ventilation holes coming through. And then they completely cut open this end, which is where they would have put the wood. Nice little hobo stove. And I think probably here you can see a little better the stacked row of rocks here that was one one wall of the foundation. And then right here is the old can dump. God, they're all frozen into the ground, but just dozens and dozens of tin cans I can see peeking through the snow here. 
what's uh, interesting about it is I can see kind of all ages. Like here's a, uh, this is an interesting one. This is a little bit newer can with an older one stuffed into it. And the older ones I can tell because of the uh, lead solder that they used to seal them up. And the way they capped them was a little bit different. So this site was used for a long time. It was probably originally homesteaded and then later used as a cowboy line camp. And then at some point I see this post here is all charred with charcoal, so I'm guessing at some point the homestead burned. Well, I had a nice walk, and now it's time to get a good hearty meal in us. So we're gonna do a little bit of a cowboy breakfast here, but we're gonna cheat. So what I've got here is I've got some bacon, uh, of course, I've got the Coyote Works Survival Knife 1.0, available from CK Knife and Tool. A great knife, by the way. I've got some biscuits in a can, some salt, some garlic salt, and some uh, butter spray. And with those things right there, we're going to make up a nice little hearty cowboy breakfast. I don't know if you can see over there, but I've got the cast iron skillet preheating. One thing about cast iron is you definitely want to preheat it. The first thing I'm going to do is get that skillet nice and hot, and then we're going to throw the biscuits in there. I've got a uh, new set of cast iron here I just ordered, so this is a... Um, I seasoned it a little bit, but I've got it seasoning some more here. This is actually two pieces, so it's a deep dish pan, and then it's a frying pan, but the frying pan also acts as a lid. So I can use this as a Dutch oven. I've also got a little coffee pot full of uh, water going right here. Hopefully that water will heat up, and if I want, I can have some hot coffee. So let's get the biscuits in the frying pan. Oh yeah, we've got these grand sized biscuits here. So let's go drop some of these biscuits in the Dutch oven. Look at that, the pan's nice and hot. Perfect. All right, we'll give that a little bit. Hopefully I don't have too much heat on there and we'll cook those biscuits up. While those biscuits are cooking up, I am going to cut up my bacon. All right, so I moved some more coals over. I've got the biscuits just sitting over there warming. They're pretty much done, and uh, we're going to throw some bacon in a pan here. And just like that, a little squall comes in with some snow coming down. So thankfully the temperature is cold enough that it's just snow and it's not rain. But this might cut my uh, breakfast time a little bit short if it sticks around. All right, since it's snowing over there, I thought I'd button a couple of things up. But just to show you guys how cold it is, this uh, two and a half gallon Rotopax can of water is almost completely frozen solid. I can hear a little bit of water in there, but man, this thing is solid. So that's one thing about the high desert is even when we don't have a lot of snow, man, it can just be bitter cold out here. And now that wind's starting to kick up a little bit, which makes things interesting. So like I said, I'm just buttoning up a couple of pieces of gear just in case this snow persists. I'm all ready to throw stuff in the truck. <sighs> Oh yeah, look at that, guys. Biscuits and bacon for breakfast. So this is what we used to call a cowboy breakfast. And the idea is that a lot of times the cowboys out on the range, when they were riding out in remote areas like this, all they had was their saddlebags, their bed rolls. They didn't have any way to keep things refrigerated and it was pretty hard country. So 
they didn't have things like eggs and stuff like that. So a real traditional cowboy breakfast was just some bacon or salt pork and some biscuits. And that gave them the carbohydrate, the biscuits, and then a nice high fat, high protein meal with the fat back, salt pork or bacon. So that's what I'm having this morning. Oh yeah, it just looks absolutely amazing. But really this is a breakfast that's not complicated. But man, is it good. Use a nice, thick, fatty bacon like this. Really, really tasty. And this will stick to your ribs for a long time. All right, now that breakfast, lunch is done. The real work's gotta begin. I gotta tear down this tent. I just kind of half-assed roll the rain fly. <sighs> All right, and that is basically my sleeping quarters all in one nice neat little package. Wow guys, it's turning into a little bit of a blizzard here and this could keep coming down for a while. So I've uh, for the most part got everything major packed up. Guys, I just real quick wanted to show you this because this camping setup as comfortable and elaborate as it was is actually really simple. I've basically got two boxes. I've got this Swiss Link box from Lolo Overland and that has all my camp gear in it. And then I've got that other box that has all my cooking gear in it. This time, I even brought an extra piece of gear. This is the Big Buddy heater, which normally I wouldn't bring. I just brought it this time to test it out. But actually, my Mr. Buddy Buddy heater is inside this box. So my base setup is two boxes, a chair, a table, an ice chest, and then the tent and cot in one bundle inside there, and then my bedroll. So what I have in the truck so far is my Rotopax thing of water, my bedroll all rolled up, mattress pad, sleeping bag, pillows, everything are all in there. My tent and cot all bundled together. And actually I have that canvas ground cloth right there, but it just stays in the truck. And then that other pile of gear that I just showed you. Wow, when I set out for this trip, we got a bunch of snow the last couple of days back home where I was in town. And I really thought this was gonna be more of an extreme snow camping trip. Well, obviously you guys saw what happened and that wasn't really the case. I got out here and it's so much drier out in this country, it's cold, but there just wasn't much snow. Well, lo and behold, now that I'm just getting ready to roll out of here, look, it is freaking dumping. And it has been for a little while now, so I'll be interesting to see if this starts piling up. Yeah, guys, I think it's time to go. <laughs> We're just getting soaked out here. One thing I've heard people say a lot is that these soft toppers can be a little brittle in the cold weather. So I don't know that that's the case, but I don't want to break this because I really like it. So I'm always really gentle with it when it's cold like this. All right, I think we're all buttoned up and good to go. Well, we are on the trail and man, it is really coming down out there. I don't know. I don't know how much we'll be able to find. There's another historic spot I wanted to take us to, but with the snow and the wind blowing out there, it's going to be tough to film outside. And, um, and to be honest with you, I don't know how much we'll see out there. Yeah, I've always loved just tooling down these little two-track roads out here. And one thing that I always keep in mind about this country out here is 
this was hard country and if there's a road out here it probably goes somewhere so it's amazing over the years the things that i found just by following these little two track dirt roads out and being willing to get out and do a little wandering around here and there get out on foot and kind of look at the ground look for signs see if i see any old tin cans or anything like that so i never find that it's wasted time to just follow out these little tracks like this All right, so we're starting to get out of the trees a little bit here and break out into this open country. Still snowing pretty good out there. Well, things just don't always go as planned. So this trip was one of those that really didn't go anything like how I planned. When I set out yesterday, I thought I was in for a pretty severe snow camping trip. In fact, that's what I was hoping for was I really wanted to kind of put my gear to the test in some more severe snow. At least put this setup that I'm running in the truck since I'm relatively new. This is my second trip with this loadout in the truck, so I'm still kind of getting it refined and everything. But as oftentimes happens, Mother Nature didn't have things planned out the same way as I did. Ended up being just kind of a cold trip, but I did get to spend some time around camp. That was pretty enjoyable. I did get another opportunity to kind of make some adjustments to the gear, a little bit more practice setting up and tearing down the tent. And it is the coldest night so far that I got to spend in that gazelle tent. I sure hope you guys enjoyed tagging along for this trip. I'm sorry there wasn't more monumental stuff to see, but hopefully you enjoyed hanging out with me a little bit on the journey and in camp. I know I sure appreciate having you guys along. I always look forward to your comments, your questions, and above all, guys, I'll look forward to seeing you on the next adventure. Coyote Works, out. Mm -hmm.